Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And if you have been watching exploits and malware for a while, you probably noticed that even old attacks often still work and tend to come back occasionally. Xavier ran into an interesting piece of a macro malware that actually tried to revive a technique that had been used by the Melissa Worm back in March of 1999. The technique here is to use Visual Basic for Applications or VBA uh, to disable certain menus in the application, to alter the application's menu. Now, the malware that Xavier ran into, it tried to disable certain security features that a user could possibly enable. Apparently, that didn't work, but Xavier kept playing with it and was able to at least disable selected menus like for example, copy and cut, which often is disabled in order to prevent people from copying data from a spreadsheet into another document. And then we got an update to a story that I believe I originally covered back in January about a month ago, but uh, it has been coming back. So I figure uh, good to update you on it. It's related to the Google Chrome extension Great Suspender. Uh, this particular extension is supposed to suspend activity in windows that are currently not visible. And the goal here, of course, is to save battery. Uh, safe as CPU power. But as it has happened, sadly, quite frequently, uh, this was a very popular extension, over 2 million downloads, and well, uh, the developer then sold it to a new entity, and the new entity that purchased the extension started to add malicious uh, features to the extension, essentially exfiltrating uh, data. And actually, this was first noted in a GitHub comment uh, to the Crate Suspender back in November. Well, uh, the update now is that Google finally got around to mark this extension officially as malicious, so it should no longer uh, be uh, downloadable. And as a little bit of bad side effect, if you had any suspended tabs, well, uh, they are now gone. The extension will no longer work. Uh, there are some tricks that are mentioned in a CDNet article that I'll be linking to that you can use uh, to recover the content from these suspended tabs. And sticking with Google for one more story here, turns out uh, Google updated Google Chrome uh, last Thursday and this uh, latest version fixes one uh, critical vulnerability, CVE 2021. 21148. This vulnerability has already been exploited in the wild. Always a good idea to just uh, restart Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using once a day, which uh, will often then also trigger the automatic update process. And Netscout published an interesting blog post based on some earlier work from Baidu that documents how Plex servers are being used in reflective denial of service attacks. Now, the denial of service mechanism here is pretty straightforward, and we have seen this uh, before. It uses the simple service discovery protocol or SSDP a simple spoofed UDP packet can trigger a large response. And a lot of media servers are enabling this protocols so your media client can easily find uh, which media servers are available on the local network. And SSDP is also heavily used by other file sharing protocols and the like to advertise themselves on the local network. The problem is here that in this case, it has been exposed on the global internet. Of course, the big question here is why? Well, uh, typically you're not enabling uh, these ports and forwarding them uh, to your Plex server. That would be somewhat unusual and also really uh, not that terribly useful necessarily. But apparently what is happening here is the Plex server 
taking advantage of a system called, well, universal plug and play. Universal plug and play allows a network device to essentially reconfigure your firewall. And this is a protocol that has caused issues in the past, has also been abused in denial of service attacks itself. But here what happens is that the Plex server basically exposes itself to the public internet by sending these universal plug and play commands to your router. This is a feature that I would highly recommend you disable in your router. You don't really want random devices on your network to expose themselves to the internet. If you do need port forwarding, uh, then please enable it manually in specific cases where you actually need and want this feature. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.